So, hi there, and welcome back to the AgriRouter API developer tutorial. In this video, we are going to talk about the concepts of communication. What does that mean? We're going to talk about the decisions you have to make before onboarding your app instance, the elements of an endpoint and how your app instance communicates with this endpoint, we we'll talk about the general workflow of communication and we're going to talk about building, sending, receiving and analyzing commands as well as messages. Okay, so let's just start with a reminder of the hierarchy of the agri-router. As you remember, we can connect accounts and we can have several types of software which are connected directly or indirectly to the agri-router and which show up in the agri-router from a customer's view as endpoints. So let's take a look at the decisions we have to make. Imagine you have an endpoint and you want to onboard a new app instance. The first decision you have to make is for the secured communication which type of certificate would you prefer? You can either receive a P12 or a PEM certificate. So that's a quite easy decision to make. Let's go a little bit further. You have to decide on a protocol. You can either communicate with the agri-router using MQTT or you can use HTTP REST. The advantage of MQTT is that you don't have to poll. You can use the publish subscribe functionality of MQTT, you have a constant connection and you can communicate with multiple endpoints and only use one MQTT connection so you don't need multiple MQTT clients. The advantage of HTTP REST, of course, we already used that one for onboarding and a lot of developers know HTTP REST much better than MQTT because HTTP REST has been there some more time than MQTT. But however, if you decide for MQTT, you can still decide on the type of connection. You can either say you want a single connection, so every endpoint has its own MQTT connection, or you can use the so-called router devices. We're gonna show you in another video how you can set up and handle those router devices to send communication between your endpoints and app instances over specific router devices, so over specific MQTT connections. However, if you decide to use MQTT, you already know which type of data format we will exchange because MQTT currently only supports the JSON interface. HTTP REST has the advantage that you can select a format. You can either use JSON or you can use native protobuf. The advantage of JSON, of course, it is human readable, but it has a bigger data load. So as you exchange text here, there are more bytes that you send over the network. But it is also used for onboarding, so you have already implemented some JSON analyzing and writing functionality. On the other hand, native protobuf is optimized for the transport, but if you want to debug your communication, you might only see some cryptic, yeah, some cryptic signs and letters. But on the other hand, protobuf is also used for the messages and commands, so the technology and the libraries used for protobuf are already implemented in your solution. So if you made those decisions, you can go on and you will have your app instance and this app instance, as we already told, has an endpoint. So if your app instance want, uh, wants to connect to the endpoint, it needs a network connection this is the layer where we can talk about if you want to use MQTT or HTTP REST. And once you have made this decision, you can send messages and commands to the inbox. 
and there are three possibilities or three groups of messages slash commands we can talk about here. Uh, number one is what we call a message. So a data package that you want to send not to the agri-router, but over the agri-router. For example, a PDF file or an image or a task data. This message is given to the routing and through the data routing, it shall reach the destination app instance. Let's just imagine we are the destination app instance, then our app instance would receive a message into its feed. The feed is the buffer where messages are stored until they can be delivered to an app instance. Messages could either reach your feed because they were directly addressed to your endpoint or they were part of the subscriptions. So you set up your endpoint to receive all the published messages. We're going to talk about this in particular in a later video. However, there might be messages coming to your feed through the subscription functionality. Now all the messages are buffered in your feed and you somehow have to receive those messages. You can receive those messages by sending a call for messages. So you can either ask for the message headers or for the messages itself. And the feed will forward those messages to your outbox from where you receive the messages. If push notifications are activated, you will directly receive a copy of the message, but you will still have to confirm the message in the feed. Again, if you use HTTP REST, you have to pull your outbox for new results. If you use MQTT, the message will directly be published to your app instance, so to your MQTT client. Now you might wonder how a subscription is set up, how the capabilities are set, or how you could get a list of the endpoints so that you know who to send a message to. This can be done by sending what we call here other commands. So sending a subscription, the capability, uh, requesting the endpoint list, and so on and so on. And those other commands will simply deliver a result to your app instance. For example, if you send the capabilities for the first time, you will only receive an egg, so an acknowledgement. And if you send your capabilities, the same capabilities again, then you will receive an acknowledgement with messages and the message will tell you, hey, I already knew those capabilities. So that's how your app instance communicates with the endpoint. There is one special use case. If we are talking about a telemetry platform, then you can see we have our app instance and this app instance might, for example, have two virtual CUs. So our app instance communicates in behalf of those virtual CUs. In that case, it looks a little bit different for us because we have one inbox and one outbox, but they are not directly talking to one feed and one routing and so on, but we have several of them. Our cloud platform has its own incoming and outcoming, has its own feed, endpoint list capability and subscription list, and as well our virtual CU1 and our virtual CU2 have the same. So your communication will still go to the same endpoint, but if you want to receive messages from your feed, you have to request the feed of either your app instance or the feed of your virtual CU or the feed of the other virtual CU. The difference is that the inbox and outbox is described by the device alternate ID and the address of the feed and endpoint list and so on is described by the sensor alternate ID. The push notification functionality can be activated or deactivated for every single feed. So you have one feed for the virtual CU, one for the app instance and one for the second app instance. But still you have one outbox that you can fill with 
information from multiple members. Now let's take a look at a more general view to the workflow of communication. As we already said, we can send commands and messages and receive results. And what's coming now is just one possible solution. You can do a different solution in your software, but what I described now shall describe all possibilities you have with messaging and one possible solution how to handle this messaging. Because you could, for example, set your communication in, let's call it a special thread, where the communication always runs circles and you set up a queue where you can put in messages from the outside and, for example, some callbacks to analyze and handle the responses. So which messages should would be thrown into that queue? Of course, message number one, directly after you onboard it, you have to send the capabilities. You cannot send any other message before you send the capabilities. And if subscriptions are part of your use case, you should also already send the subscriptions directly after the capability message was sent and answered successfully. Okay, what else can we send? Of course, as we just said, we can send our messages. So our task data, an image, a PDF, the FD telemetry data, whatever. Any message that shall not be sent to the agri-router, but over the agri-router to some other partner in your network, some farming software or some terminal or whatever. Uh, second type of information you can throw into the communication is the app instance status. For example, let's say we have a tractor with a terminal and a round baler and someone disconnects the round baler. You have to update your team set and you have to make sure that every time the team set, so the configuration of CU plus attached machinery with our capabilities and subscription changes, you send an update and you change your team set context ID. As I already said, you also have to do this with changing subscriptions and capabilities. So that's the input side. This is the side what you can send to the agri-router. Let's take a look at the other side because on the one hand, of course, you can receive messages. You could, for example, do this on a time base, like I request to get all my feed messages every five minutes or every one minute. So you could receive the task data images, PDF, telemetry, videos, and so on that were sent to your feed. And even in case you use the push notification functionality, you shall request the header message at least every X minutes to make sure that you did not miss any message due to connection problems, offline times or whichever reason. So if someone updates his team set, you should also check the endpoint list. Also here it's done on a time base. Check if the endpoint list changed so that you know who you can send messages to, if there are new members, if there are new routing set up, so that you always have an up-to-date view of your agri-router account you are communicating with. Now, if you want to send messages, you, of course, first have to build them. Let's, for example, say we want to send this agri-router logo dot bitmap, so an image file. First thing you have to do is unimportant if you have a message or a command, you have to encode it to your technical message type. TMT stands for technical message type. And for an image, this is just a base64 encoding of the binary file. For commands like requesting the endpoint list, there are protobuf definitions that can be found on the GitHub that have to be used to form the command. 
Okay, but for our image, for our bitmap, we just create a base64 string and we put this into an any object and say this is a byte string and the type URL is a string. So now that we've done this, we have to decide on chunking. You could either say it's only 40 kilobytes, so we can send this as one message, or we have a high resolution file of four megabytes, then we have to talk about chunking. Imagine that your image is really big and it has a size of four megabytes. Now the aggregator can only send messages up to a size of one megabyte. This was implemented to ensure that even if you have a mobile connection with a low bandwidth and with a lot of disconnection, you will be able to send data to the agri-router and not have to start over and over and over again with the same file. So you can send packages of at a maximum one megabyte. And in our case, we have to send four of those. So what does that mean? That means we take our picture and cut it in four pieces. Here are our four pieces and we have to add the chunk info. The chunk info is one field in the protobuf message that we have to use. And it is an optional field. So if you don't do chunking, you don't have to set the chunk info. But as we do chunking here, you have to set it. And then you have to send all those four packages one by one. And to send them, you now have to build the message. And that's what we're gonna do on this slide. You start with a chunk or a full package of the message. You will create a message out of payload and envelope. The envelope includes the application ID, the recipients, and if you want to publish your message. So this message now has to be base64 encoded. If you are not using native protobuf, if you use native protobuf communication, you will have to use a protobuf object. But let's just say we're gonna use base64 here and you package your message to a base64 string. And now you create your message and you have to add a timestamp. If your message is quite small and you have to send smaller messages more often, for example, if you send telemetry data, it might make sense that you don't send every single message on its own, but collect some messages before you send them all as a package. So here we have our messages. We got three of our messages together. They have to be put into one command, which includes the body and our header is the information of who is sending the message. So your sensor alternate ID, your capability alternate ID and so on. Now you have your message created and you're ready to send it as an HTTP post or via MQTT publish. Now to receive a message, you have to do multiple steps. And in this first version, we are gonna receive messages without using the push notification functionality. I describe the full version here using the header request command, but you could also just request the messages. Okay, if you use the header command, you would first start with requesting the header list at the feed and the feed will forward a message to your outbox that you could then read in your communication stack of your software so that you would create an image of the headers of the feed. You can also filter for a certain time range or a sender, for example. And then you should decide which message you want to have and which message perhaps you don't want to have. The messages you don't want to have, you should delete them. So you send a delete command to the agri-router and agri-router will answer with an egg with messages that includes a list of message IDs. 
and we can mark in our list that we have deleted these messages or in this case this message so now we can request our messages that we want to have by sending a request for messages this request is forwarded to our feed and our feed forwards a copy of the message to our outbox please recognize that it is only a copy and the data persists in the feed until the agri-router can make sure that you really received the message. Now, if you receive your message through the outbox, it will be packaged in a full command. And we're gonna take a look at this on the next slide. But let's just go on with our communication here. After we received our message, we have to confirm this message. The confirmation goes to the feed. And as you can see, when sending the confirmation our message number two disappears and the last message we receive is an egg with messages that includes a message with message ids that could be confirmed and now we can go on and try to analyze our message that we just received so let's take a look what we have here of course number one we have our package which could include multiple messages let's extract our one message that interests us this message is base64 or protobuf structure and if you base64 decode this message you can differentiate between the envelope which means who sent it what's the type of the message and the payload for our file receiving or image receiving example this would just be the raw data of your file so let's as a last step in this video take a look at how the communication works when the push notifications are activated of course we have the same structure and the first thing you have to do is you have to send the capability command and have to make sure that push notifications are enabled you can send the capabilities also during the process to enable or disable push notifications what you have to make sure is that you send the subscriptions always after you send the capabilities message it is unimportant if you change the capabilities list or only the push notification status subscriptions will be deleted if you send a new capability message of course you will as always receive an acknowledgement or perhaps an acknowledgement with messages that depends on if you changed the capabilities so now if you receive a message this message will be sent to your feed and a copy will directly be pushed to your outbox and whenever you request at your outbox or in case you are using the mqtt protocol you don't have to request it it will directly be pushed to you you will receive this message in a push notification message and the message can then be decoded that's quite the same way as we talked about before the container push notification has only a minor difference to the container of egg with feed messages so but what you of course still have to do is you have to send a confirmation to the agri router to make sure that this message is deleted from the feed the background of this is that when messages are laying in the outbox and the timeout is reached and you are not receiving a push notification from the outbox perhaps just because you've been offline for a few days then the agri router doesn't know that the message was not delivered from this outbox and so the message persists in the feed and so you have to confirm 
that you received this message. The message will be deleted and you will receive an egg with messages that includes a list of all the message IDs that you confirmed. Okay, that's an overview on the possibilities of communication and on the concepts of communication with the Agri Router. In the next videos, we're gonna start sending messages and we're Thank gonna you talk for about watching routing. and hoping to see you in the next video.